And I actually want to start with this uh, AEW uh, issue in the opening match with the uh, superplex and also uh, Stu Grayson doing the uh, twisting acai, neither of which ended up being caught. So uh, let's well, the guy begin that, with those. The guy that gave the superplex got caught. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't catch the guy taking the bigger bump. And they're dangerous. Well, my biggest thing, and someone else on Twitter that mentioned it, and I agreed completely, the Stu Grayson dive, it's incredibly hard to catch because there are elbows and knees and feet and hands and stuff spinning, flipping, and twisting. And it's like, it's hard to tell what's coming at you. And it's like, nobody wants to catch an elbow in the face Well, this guy's doing a 360 spin while he's flipping. And that's why those dives in particular almost never get caught because there's that, oh, shit, it's coming at me. I don't want to get hit with something where if dives were done in a more catchable fashion where you can see him coming, you can actually make a catch rather than just sort of trying to let him bump off you with hoping not to get elbowed or kneed in the face. And remember that. Jesse Sorensen took a knee to the top of the head and broke his neck doing a catch. And catching's dangerous. And with the more moving, twisting, flailing, and body parts, the harder it is. And again, there's a lot of bodies out there, so you hope. But I, I know and I've mentioned this on the show many times before. The more bodies you get out there to catch you, the more every individual person figures the other guys will take the majority of the blow. And then you just get what I call the Red Sea catch, where it's like everybody parts like the Red Sea and you hit the floor between everybody, which, you know, pretty much is what poor Stu Grayson got. And he landed hard. I can give you a little bit of insight here, Lance. So first off with the I don't know a lot. I don't know what happened with the superplex. OK, but I think they just overshot. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it was partially that. And also when you're doing a superplex. And you're, let's say I'm out there and the superplex is coming at me, okay? Even if I were, like, super strong, I can't catch both guys. So then it's kind of like, well, I sort of got to catch one of the guys. Because the two guys put together, it's a 12-foot-long thing coming at you. So it could have been that everyone on the floor looked up and they were like, well, fuck, I got to catch one of the guys. And they all caught the first guy and not the second guy, who was poor Nick Jackson who landed right on his ass. So, you know, that one, I think, I presume that's what happened. Like, they thought that they were all going to land where they were, and poor Nick was 12 feet in the air, and he overshot. Here's the Stu Grayson one. So, I did hear uh, that one person who was there and was supposed to be catching, they said that, like, he went up, and as soon as he started to twist, it's actually like Simone Biles, the catcher got the twisties. (laughs) <laughs> they were like, as soon as he started twisting, I was like totally thrown off and I didn't know, like they were just totally confused. like Where they were going. Yeah, and then and the rest is history. But the thing from Stu Grayson's point of view, and I've not talked to Stu Grayson, but I was a gymnast and I taught gymnastics. When you do that full twist, okay, the idea is that, just imagine a laid out moonsault, okay? The idea on a twist is that you begin going up, you do the full twist, and then you finish in the laid out position. So the idea is not that you you take off and like you just keep twisting until you land on the ground. It's up, do the full twist, and then come out. So in theory, the full twisting moonsault should be no more difficult to catch if you're on the floor than a normal moonsault because you should go up, you should complete the twist, and then you start coming down in the normal laid out position. There should well, not be knees and elbows everywhere. Well, it should you, just be a catch. You'll have a lot less time to spot the catch, though. Sure, but in theory, it should be the exact same catch as a moonsault if you twist. Now, if you go up and you start doing the entire rotation, and then right on the way down, you start twisting, like, everyone's going to die. There will be knees and elbows and everything, and people will be scared, and they'll move out of the way. I didn't watch it again to find out if that's what happened. Well, he landed on his back. So he he probably was trying to do a one and a half. Maybe. Or was it a case? And again, I have no idea. Was it just the, I'm going to flip and twist and I have no idea how many of each I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep spinning until someone catches me. 
Because I, I have worked with people that do that where it's like, well, what exactly are you doing? He's like, I oh, know, I'm just going to flip. I'm like, oh, great. It's like, I'd kind of like to know how you plan on laying this out. So the I know what I'm supposed to get. The should be up one twist and down. It should not be just take off and just fucking start twisting until you land. Because that's dangerous for you and it's dangerous for them. Yeah. What if you're a quarter of the way around on a spin and you're coming down on your side? Or, you know, it's just... And the other thing, too, and this is where it's just shit happens sometimes. It's like, not everybody flips the same. Like... I had the hardest damn time catching Rob Van Dam when he did his moon salts and stuff. It's like he never seemed to travel in the air the way that I would. And it's like I always he seemed to get good height. And I'm like, OK, he's going to be there. And then it's like I'd realize he's not traveling as far as I thought. And I'd be like, shit, I'm too far away. And I'd have a hard time getting underneath him. I had a really hard time reading Rob in the air. Where other guys, again, Ultimo Dragon is an example, I could always just read him. He moved the way my brain expected a body to travel in the air. And I could, you know, I'd catch the Asai Moonsault and it's like, brother wouldn't even touch the floor. He'd end up laying right on top of me when we landed on the ground super easy. But with Rob, I always found a harder time. And I know Rob doesn't think I'm a good catch. And for him, I'm not. Because I just, he always seemed to rotate and float less or more than I expected. And it's like, I always had a hard time catching Rob. And with Grayson's dive being so much more complicated, it's very easy for people to misread it. And it's like, if you're in too close and he overshoots, then it's like, ah, shit. And, you know, a lot of people can have great intentions, but if you can't read where they're going, it gets hard. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.